On the 21st of January 2021, six people, including a 14-year-old boy, would travel to Linwood Road in the Handsworth area of Birmingham. They had made their way there in a white Ford S-Max, which had only been stolen a few weeks prior. The S-Max, of course, had sported false number plates. Upon arriving on Linwood Road, the group would spot a 15-year-old boy, Keon Lincoln, who had been talking to a friend at the front of his house. Out of nowhere though, the white Ford S-Max would come to a halt, and five of the six emerged from the car wielding Rambo knives and a firearm. To this, Keon would jump over his garden wall and run up the road. But the group gave chase and he was stabbed from behind. Although he'd been stabbed, he continued to run, but just as he was getting away, the 14-year-old boy would produce a firearm and shot it in Keon's direction, just missing him. Although it did miss, it made Keon stumble and fall. From here, another shot was fired from the 14-year-old boy, hitting Keon in the stomach. The group then surrounded him attacking him with Rambo knives where he lay. But Keon was a fighter because although he had just been shot and stabbed several times, he got back to his feet and made a run for it. Sadly, this wouldn't be of no help though because soon after, he collapsed once again. Now you'd think that after such a vicious attack already, the group would flee the scene, but they didn't. Again, the group lay into Keon, stabbing him. After the 40 second attack, the five were seen getting back into the Ford S-Max and fled the scene. But again, Keon kept fighting. You see, even though he'd just suffered three separate attacks within the space of 40 seconds, he somehow managed to get to his feet and went from the road to the pavement where he would collapse for a final time. Local residents had heard all the commotion and instantly came to his aid. A nurse was first on the scene attempting to save Keon's life, but soon after, paramedics would arrive. Keon would be rushed to hospital, but sadly, only two hours later, he would go on to be pronounced dead. So, a murder investigation was now opened. Believe it or not, only moments after the police had arrived at the crime scene, reports were being made that the Ford S-Max had crashed into a house and a car in nearby Wheeler Street, with the occupants making off on foot. It's been said that the driver of the car potentially saw a police patrol car and may have panicked when he realised the police were so close behind him. Either way, from here, the group split up. 18-year-olds Michael Ajokawu and Tajim Breckenridge are captured on CCTV, walking calm and collected as if they hadn't just taken part in the murder of a 15-year-old schoolboy. Whilst it's thought that the 14-year-old and a 16-year-old who was also involved in the attack itself called a taxi to Dakin Avenue, the place where eventually all parties involved would meet. But after piecing together evidence from the car itself, CCTV and mobile phone data analysis, four of the six who we've been talking about would go on to be charged in relation to the incident. You see, a large knife in a sheath was found in the footwell of the car itself, which had DNA from both Keon and Michael whilst a face mask was found in the boot which contained DNA traces from the 16-year-old boy. This story, however, saw five people charged in relation to the investigation. You see, 18-year-old Kieran Donaldson, although not present at the attack itself, had supplied weapons that were used to inflict the injuries on Keon. It's thought that between October of 2020 and January of 2021, he purchased 10 Rambo knives, two survival knives and two machetes. Either way, all would go on to deny the charges that were brought against them, so they went on trial at Birmingham Crown Court. In court, information had started to come out saying that the police couldn't find a motive behind the attack, and still to this day, there's no answers. All we know is that the 14-year-old boy had knew Keon according to him, but it isn't exactly clear from reports how this was so. After a five-week trial, however, four of the five were found guilty of murder. Kieran Donaldson being found guilty on the lesser charge of manslaughter for supplying the weapons. According to reports, all five are to be sentenced on the 29th of November, 2021. 
But again, we'll never know the true motive of why Keon Lincoln was murdered, unless at some point one of the people involved give a statement to say why they done it. One theory that came out by lead detectives after the trial was that the 14 year old boy may have gone out of his way to target Keon to impress his older friends, with Keon simply being in the wrong place at the wrong time. But if that is the case, how sad is that? Being on your own front doorstep means being in the wrong place at the wrong time. So you're trying to tell me that a 15 year old boy can't even feel safe on his own front doorstep because of attacks like this. Just so you guys are aware though, this isn't the end of the investigation. Yes, although five of the people involved have been convicted, remember there was six people in the car on that fateful day and four of those six have recently been convicted. If I do get any further updates surrounding this case, I'm going to post them over on my Instagram, which will be linked down in the description below if any of you are interested. For now though, I do want to take this time out just to say rest in peace to Keon, and I do want to send my condolences over to his family and friends. It's an extremely difficult time for them right now, because of course the trial has only recently just wrapped up over these past couple of weeks. But... Give the video a like for more crime related content like this and make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't. It's been me, Ape Hancho, and I'll see you in the next one. Charmaine is, you know, still devastated. Uh, cries a lot. Uh, you know, every time she thinks about what happened, every time, uh, you know, it's discussed, it just brings tears um, and sadness. Charmaine has looked at those young people in the dark. She's seen their faces and and all that comes to her mind is that they're just kids. You know, they're just kids. And so she feels, you know, a sadness in her heart for them. She feels a sadness for the parents, as do all of us. Leon lived with his mum and, and his sisters and I think was as, as like any other brother would be. Um, he was well loved by them and you know this tragic incident has, has taken place right on their doorstep. Um, they were able to hear the shots ring out as they were inside their house and have obviously come outside and, and been confronted with um, you know, their own worst nightmare. I hope that the verdict today does provide some solace to them um, and they will always mourn the loss of Keon. They, they will mourn his loss for the rest of their lives but but hopefully now knowing the answers to the questions that they've had for a good number of months will provide some form of solace to them.